parents today. So, uh, like my mom said, you know, it's when you're going through something severe and you have to like push through it. And it kind of ties into some of the, you know, talking about like how do we fight our battles. You know, we have God to help us to fight it. We can worship him, we can pray for, with him, to him, and he'll help us. So the main scripture, I guess, would be in Luke chapter 8, starting in verse 22. So it's, again, it's Luke chapter 8, starting in verse 22.
like, how do we get through these battles? Like, how do we have perseverance? And so, kind of what um, the message was actually like, we have to worship him more, right? So, in Psalms, uh, no, no, hold on. I want to go to Romans chapter 8 first. Because um, it's going to get harder, you know, in the last days we know persecution and all these troubles are going to be harder. And because we're Christians, we think we might have it more easy, you know, because we're Christians. But on the contrary, we could have more troubles because of it. But we have someone who's going to help us through it. So yeah. it's uh, Romans chapter 8 in verse 18. I think it's verse 18. <clears throat> So even though all this stuff that we're going through may feel like a lot, like it's like one thing after another, like you just get your head above the water and then you're pushed back down again. You know, Paul says in Romans chapter 8, in verse 18, it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. <clears throat> so whatever we're going through, nothing's going to compare to, you know, once we're in heaven, or like, you know, what's going to be through us, double that glory, you know. When we're in heaven, none of this heartache, none of this trials, none of this almost getting your foot cut off is going to be, you know, worth, it's not going to be worth anything because we're going to be in heaven with Jesus and everything could be peaceful and, um, and, you know, God's going to help us do that. <clears throat> In all of this suffering of this present age, the sickness, the pain, the disappointment, poverty, mistreatment, persecution, it has to be considered insignificant um, because when we compare it to the blessing and the privileges that we have as Christians, you know, all the promises that God has in this book that, you know, it's ours. You know, we get to take each, you know, he's never going to leave us. That we're going to be blessed because, um, you know, all those promises, right? If you know, reading your Bible, all those things that God says you're going to have. You're going to have, you know, him beside you. He's never going to leave you. We're more than conquerors if you continue reading chapter 8. It's one of my favorite chapters. Um, you know, it says that nothing can s separate us from him. You know, all these trials, we just have to go through it. We just have to persevere. And we're going to be more than conquerors in the end because we're on the winning side. Um, and then... All we have to do is, um, you know, just worship him. You know, how do we fight? We read, we pray, we worship him, and he will give us that peace um, when we're in the storm. Like, Jesus telling the water, you know, peace, be still. And the water is just calm right down. So in Psalms 34, in the first verse um, is what the next scripture is. So Psalms 34. <clears throat> It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The hunger shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So this is talk. Um, this song was when David had to, King David, he had to change his behavior in front of Abimelech and how he escaped from Abimelech like back in the Old Testament. So it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. So even in the good times, even in the bad times, you know, we have to just continue to, like, give worship to God. <clears throat> and even telling our testimonies, because it says the hunger, uh, it says in uh, the New Living Translation, it talks about saying, I shall uh, tell, of my, tell of how good God is, and the humble shall hear, and they shall take heart. Meaning, other people... If we're talking about our testimonies, other people are going to take on to that. Maybe they're going to do the same thing. And if they see that God wants you through that issue, then they're going to be happy. They're going to be like, look, if God can do it for that person, then, you know, I'm going to be okay because he's already brought this person through it. And in verse 7 and 8 of the same chapter, 34, it says, uh, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. So the whole uh, chapter is talking about, you know, God's not going to leave us because he's surrounding us, you know. So when we, there's actually a really good song that I want to learn to play on the piano. It's called Surrounded. And it talks about, uh, this is how I fight my battles. And it's talking about that when we fight our battles, 
you know, we're worshiping, we're having our hands raised, we're praying, and you know, we don't actually have to do the fighting because God's on our part. And it may look like you're surrounded by all your troubles and all your worries, but actually Jesus is surrounding you. It's a really good song, but I can't sing really good, so I'm not going to try it now, but it's a really good song, though. So, and even like, um, so David is saying, you know, I'm going to bless the Lord, I'm going to tell him my story. You know, taste or try God and you're going to see that God's never going to fail you, in other words. And... Like the disciples had, they had the maker, you know, they had Jesus in the flesh, in the same boat, you know. And even though we don't see Jesus right now, like he's with us and he's going to help us. He's going to calm our storms if we just ask him, if we just help. It's going to be hard. We're not going to like, you know, get off easy because the trying and the temp the persecution and the, uh, we have that, the trials are actually going to make us grow. So, you know. Sometimes we need those things. We don't want to do those things. But God needs to do something in us to let us grow. And if we just persevere, then it's just going to be all the better. Um, because in Psalms 121, it is actually, I'm going to turn it because I'm going to read it. But it talks about, like, where does your help come from? Like, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Okay. It says, chapter 1, not chapter, Psalms 121. Verse 1, it says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence my help cometh from. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And, like, so you're looking on your church. This is when the Jews are making their pilgrimage to Jerusalem. It was Psalms 121. Okay, but, uh, so in Psalms, these Psalms are, like, the songs they would sing as they're climbing up the hill to go to Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is on the hill. So when they say, I will look, lift up my eyes, they're looking onto the city of Jerusalem. Because not only, but then it goes into deep hole, like, my help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. So not only do, are they looking up to the tabernacle, the temple of the tabernacle, you know, where the church is, because they can get help from the church, like our family here, we can get help from our brothers and sisters. But also, they're looking up, away from their troubles, to God who makes everything, right? So if we stop looking at our problems and stop looking at the waves and the wind and just look up, you know, because we have the God who made everything. Like, he knew we were going to go through this anyways. It might not be good, but he's going to turn it for good. Um, so in the end of the chapter, it says, The Lord uh, shall preserve the, thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So he's going to watch us wherever we go. Like, if we have to go out somewhere or coming in, he's going to be with us. Uh, we just have to have faith that he's going to take care of everything. And um, and stop looking at the waves because he's going to help us. And that's what I have. Amen. Thank you. Well, I was watching TBN the other day, and uh, I can't remember who they were talking about, whether it was David or someone else that was going out to battle. And it said that um, whatever example they were given, it was in the middle of the night, I just woke up because I sleep with it on. It's good to have the Word of God going all night long, I think. And, um, and it said that God had told them to put the worshipers up front. Put the worshipers in front. It was a huge battle that was at hand. And God told them, put the worshipers up front. You know, because God wanted them to know. It, it wasn't them that was going to win the battle. Not by their hand, but it was by God's hand that the battle was going to be won. And so, a lot of times we need to do that. Just as Christina said, we need to just worship him. We need to get our eyes off everything that's going on, which is hard to do. When you're in the battle, it's hard to do. You know, to stop looking at everything that's going on and just to look up. I remember being told to look up once, but it was for dusting. And, you know, but, um, but, you know, we need to look up, not just for the dust, but we need to look up to him and get our eyes off what's going on around us. Because even with Peter and, and 
Peter walking on the water and the storm around. It was easy for him to get his eyes on those waves and the trouble that was at hand and took his eyes off Jesus and began to sink. But we need to remember to do that, to keep our eyes on him.